Hi everyone, I thought I'd film an update of my garden now that the season is completed. The garden beds are now all tidied up for the winter. Still have a few things growing, but I thought I'd flip the camera and show you what the garden looks like now that it's finally been cleaned up. Now I won't try to take too much time. I'll try to go through this quickly and I'll just kind of go over everything so you can see what it looks like. So here we are right at the end of November. We're two days away from December the 1st. And here is the garden right now. So this is the main entrance where I'm coming in from. This here, all this over here, this whole section, this is the original section of the garden. This is the original 2,000 square feet. And then all of it beyond, all that way, and all of this, this is all the new garden. So all together we're at 7,000 square feet, minus the section in the center, but that center has not com been completed yet. So here we are, this is the new section, and this is all cleaned up. I still have some parsnips here that I will harvest when I need them, as long as I can dig them out, but I'm good right now. So if they happen to overwinter, uh, I will harvest them through the winter on nice days. These are the parsnips. These, are, so the beds are cleaned up. This did have cucumbers and radishes and parsnips. All we have left is parsnips down that way over there. Uh, that section there, that was squashes on this side, winter squash, and this side was cucumber. This here was like lettuces, endive, that kind of thing. This here was a bed of peas along the trellis, and then on the exterior, on this side was eggplant, and this side was tomatillos, and that's obviously cleaned up, and what I do is I just trim the stems above the soil line, and I leave the roots, as you can see here. There's just way too much disturbance to rip them out. Now. Over here, just run it through quickly. These were, so this here was squash, actually zucchini in this bed, different kinds of zucchini. This was winter squash, okay? And then starting from this bed, so one, two, three, four, five beds to make 50 tomato plants. These were all tomatoes. And you can see here by how I clean them up. Again, I just leave the stems. I don't rip them out. I let them break down over the winter and then I pull them out next year and they just typically slide out because all the roots have broken down. All those side roots. These, this was a sunflower. As you can see, I still have sunflowers. Now sunflowers are pretty awesome. Let's see if this one's rooted. See how firm it is? So this is now a rooted stake, basically. And I like to use them, if they survive the winter, I like to use them for trellising next year. So I would grow something up this or grow something next to it. But look, see how it's really firm? It's in there. And there's no point pulling it out. Might as well just use it as a support next year. So this was squash. These were tomatoes, all gone now, cleaned up. This was beets on this side here and melons on that side. Really successful this year with watermelons. First year ever, it was a great year. And these were more tomatoes. This was another tomato bed. I've topped it with sheep manure, as you can see here. And I'll do the rest next year. I'm gonna order a truck of composted sheep manure and I'll just top all the beds. It's just a lot easier that way than taking bags and pouring them out. When you have this many beds, it's just a lot easier just to do it with wheelbarrow. So that's already done for next year. It's gonna break down over the winter. These were beans. And you can see here that I trimmed them above the soil line. And I basically just laid all the plant material on the soil and I'll let that break down. Works as a mulch and actually it's a really nice mulch because it doesn't blow away as opposed to like these garlic beds here. These are planted so this here, garlic is here, garlic is there up to about that point and this is basically half composted leaves and they do tend to fly around a little bit as you can see here. So this plant material here is a lot better as a mulch. It doesn't actually go anywhere. It just lays there, breaks down over the winter, feeds the soil. Nice organic matter. This is uh, my garlic, but hopefully, I don't see any holes, so the garlic should be okay. I could top it again. I could li basically lift that up, put it back on the bed. We'll see. It's not really, I'm not worried about it. There's a lot in here. So that's my garlic, all planted for the next year. It's about this point, so right there. And then in here, my plan is to put leeks next year. So this will all be leeks. Leeks also are long season. You don't harvest them till like now basically, or just, you know, once we get the first frost, it, the frost actually sweetens the leeks. So I'll plant, I start my seedlings in January, plant all this space with leeks. 
and then this will grow in as garlic. And then when the garlic comes out, I put in a cover crop just to feed the soil. So last year, this year I did buckwheat, so I may do buckwheat again, or I'll do fava or something like that. This was a bed of zucchini and squash, flowers everywhere. It's now ready. It's been topped also with some sheep manure as well as half composted leaves. This here was a bed of um, dwarf tomatoes, like container sized tomatoes. And I probably had eight in here. And uh, again, I just cut the stems above the soil line. And I find that a lot better if they can come out. Like, I mean, if they do come out easily, I take them out. But if they're planted firmly in there, I just leave them. And this is topped with sheep manure. And, and you can see there's like bedding in it, as well as um, some, actually it's mostly sweet manure with some leaves. And on this trellis, I had sweet peas. They went all the way to the top and I had them growing on both sides. This is a bed of herbs. I still have some in here. I have my sage, which is this big plant here. I have another sage down there. All started from seed, by the way. This is one year's growth from seed and they do over winter and they come, they just, they grow, they're like a shrub. So next year, I mean, you can see through the winter, if I come out here, I can harvest leaves of sage they don't really die and then there's thyme also planted from seed basically everything this year i planted from seed there's chives they're the first to pop up as soon as the winter you know starts melting thawing out before winter even ends there's chives and that's fennel i just left it again this bed is topped with sheep manure as well as some leaves and here we are back to this bed this was all wildflower so this was my pollinator friendly garden this whole entire thing I basically emptied a packet of uh, pollinator flower mix and I just sprinkled it on here and it, it, you could see like it filled I still have catnip that was from that seed packet as well as calendula that's going to come back this is actually um, a California poppy which is still here but I also have do you see that holes I do have a lot of mice in my garden and I need to set some traps this was one I healed in myself. I mean, it's just, it's what it is when you live in the country. So this bed, I've topped it with sheep manure, as you can see there. So it's ready for planting next year. Okay, so here we go. This is the old section. This was a bed of carrots. I've topped it with half composted leaves. And then this was a bed of peas. And I also had some hot peppers in here and lettuce it's done now and it's also topped with some I think manure I put in here and you can see see all these little things that's calendula seeds all those things are calendula seeds and they are going to seed themselves and I will have a ton more calendula once you have calendula you have to love it like I do to be okay with it coming back this bed here is a bed of strawberries I cut it all down because it was full of calendula but look See all the seeds? This will again be a bed of calendula. Once you plant calendula, you kind of have it forever. And uh, I don't, it makes me not have to start seeds every year. But this is strawberries with calendula. By the time the calendula grows in, I've had a harvest of strawberries, so it's okay. This was beets, and I still have beets. You can see, see, still see a few beets in the center. I'm actually going to show you. These can be harvested. And I multi-sow my beets, so I do sow two to three per cell. Here's actually, this one looks funny. It looks like a carrot, but it's a beet. So these are some beets, and I can come back later and get them. No rush. So in here I had hot peppers growing on the sides, beets in the middle. This is another bed that was hot peppers. Hot peppers were on the sides. And I had ground cherry self sown here. And there's some chives. And this was ground, um, sorry, this was bush beans. Had some digging in here. My fence was left open, or the wind blew it open, and I think I had some deer digging in here, but they didn't uh, um, dig out the beets for some reason. This was tomatoes on this side here, hot peppers through here. Lots of onions like to self-sow here and you can see got a lot coming up. So those should be good for next year. 
And I also have violas. These ones come back year after year. They're quite hardy. And they'll last through the winter and they'll be here um, throughout the winter and I'll see them when things start to bloom again. This is a white currant right here and a Saskatoon berry. And I prune this white currant in the winter. So like end of February, I come out here and I prune out some of the really old branches, any crossing branches to give it some air. And this year I had done that back in the winter and I had the best year ever. I mean, it's been growing really well, but it's quite an indented. And you can see here, the new, these will be the leaves next year. This is kind of a crazy bed. It's kind of like a bed of strawberries with grass. Uh, this is another bed of wild strawberries. These are alpine strawberries that I had planted along with flowers at the end and kelpis comes up in this bed. This is again another bed of strawberries. It's just kind of like the bed, is the garden, this section of the garden is in a holding pattern because we're supposed to be redoing this entire section the original section because the beds are really old they're starting to fall apart and we're going to make it match the new section so this kind of I'm not as concerned about it as others because I know that we're going to be working on this again and hopefully next summer we'll do the redo the re so over here is beets kind of was it not a very good year for beets and so I kind of multi sowed these in here directly it took forever and they're just in there but they're not great did harvest a few yesterday but let's see what happens if I pull this one this is what I get so they're not super they're small so I'm not loving these beets I'm just not loving them it's not been a great year unfortunately for beets but no worries this is soapwort don't ever plant soapwort soapwort in your garden I highly recommend this is not one for your garden. This is the most invasive perennial. It grows by rhizome that goes everywhere. And I have soapwort that comes up all in these paths, like all in here, soapwort. I even have it popping up in some of the beds. I mean, it's, it's what soap comes from. The reason I planted it was because I thought it'd be nice to have like a plant that you can pull out by the root and then rub it in your hands with some water and then have basically have natural soap, but it does spread. So if you have a place to put it that you don't mind, you can just mow the lawn, you don't care you know, like mint, you could definitely plant it, but don't plant it in your vegetable garden like I did. Live and learn. And this here is a bed that usually has chrysanthemum right here. And then it has, um, these are spring onion that I planted last year, or sorry, this spring. And the ground is already really cold. There. So this was a bag of white onions that I purchased as the um, seed onions, or what are they called, sets. And I planted a hundred in here and whatever I didn't plant, sorry, whatever didn't grow and I didn't harvest, actually they grew really, really well and they didn't go to seed. They are now growing. So that's pretty neat. I'm gonna take that home with me. Let's see if I can get another one. Isn't that neat? So I'll take those home for a little bit for, to add to my salad. Huh. That's awesome. Okay, this is a sweet pea that I planted this spring. It's coming back or it just didn't die or it sowed seeds in there. This is celery that I haven't grown, that I haven't harvested really, and I'm not going to grow it again. It's one of those crops that I think I'd rather just buy it. I did put a lot of, give it a lot of space, and it doesn't grow all that nicely as you can see. Now there is some baby growth. It is very bitter. It's got some kind of pest, so I don't love it. Another one I won't grow. This was squash. It's all cleaned up. Now this is my oh. Just go through this quickly. This was a uh, patty pan squash and a really cool bean, a 1500 year old cave bean it's called that was growing in this bed. It's cleaned up now. And then this was potatoes. This bed actually, I planted potatoes in it this year, but a lot of them grew back from last year, a lot, like the entire bed. I didn't really like it as much. They didn't grow as well, the ones that came back 
Uh, so it was okay, uh, but it was kind of neat. It was kind of like my spare bed. And again, this bed is falling apart and needs replacing. So it's okay. Next year though, I'd probably take more time and harvest all the tiny ones as I did in the other beds. And look, pansies. You can't kill those things. <laughs> this was um, onions and they've done really well. These ones were too small and they started seeding again. So I just left them for now little ones and this is some lettuce that I sewed and it's just growing exposed to snow to freezing weather and it doesn't make any difference and this is just onions I've got Egyptian walking onions over there they're really cool if you've never seen them before what they do is they grow this ball bill stem like this and then this thing bends over like that and sews itself so all these little ones here Look at that. Then they grow back and you basically have a forever supply of green onions. It's really amazing. So this is just some onions that have self-sown. Now we're in the new section. So this now, this section here, I intentioned to grow this as a berry patch and I have planted many berry bushes in here. They do take a few years to establish themselves. So in the meantime, I've been using the space for something else. Now this one here is, um, I have lettuces growing here under cover and they're doing really well. As you can see right through and i have been harvesting from them they're doing amazingly well and this is just gallardia that doesn't want to die very hardy this is berries and i have sweet potatoes in this section here but i also have a rodent problem i think there's mice because i have seen them here before and they're digging up my beds so this bed is one that i fixed it had so many channels this one here had so many channels too this was sweet potatoes i have an apple tree over here and they also dug out from the bottom. I had to basically dig all that up, put it back in the bed. This I finally cleaned up. This was the last bed that I had to do and I did this today. This was honeywort. And so honeywort is a member of the borage family and it makes beautiful flowers that kind of like, um, they, they basically waterfall cascading downwards and they're full of flowers and they bloom all the way until, you know, past frost. So on the nice warm days that we've had this fall, this plant, although many of it, much of it was dead, there was all the new growth and that was producing flowers. And so it was feeding the pollinators and I didn't want to take it down. So I finally did now because now the weather is going to get colder starting tomorrow. We're going to have a lot of snow. I decided because we have a rodent problem in this garden that I need to clean this up and just prevent any places for them to overwinter. So I cleaned it up. Actually, the roots were chewed up, so I didn't even have to cut the stems. I literally just lifted them out of the soil because the rodents uh, or the mice chewed up the roots and I topped it with this like composted mulch because I had ended up losing a lot of soil as well because they've been digging and I had to repair here on both sides. There were so many channels and actually it was hard to walk on, so I had to smooth it out they just really made a mess. Oh, look at this. Here's another channel. I just noticed that today. I'm gonna put my foot in there. Tap it down. I don't think that's gonna make much of a difference, but yeah, that's what you get. Oh, look. Oh, buggers. You can even see where they exit, where they enter. Look, there's a hole, there's a hole. Oh, just, I don't know if that does anything, but. This is an apple tree as well. It's finally starting to grow. It's been two years. So I will prune this in the winter and what I'll end up doing is like, see how these are crossing? I'll probably take out the branch right there. So this one can grow freely without any up structural, like obstructions. And I'll do that in the winter time when it's really dormant. I don't want to cut it now and have it grow. These are red currants, elderberry, more berries down there. And you can see the rooted sunflower stems. So if you have sunflowers, I highly recommend not to rip them out. They have a really serious root structure. But what you do is you remove the top. Okay, you don't want that flower head. You remove all the side leaves and you leave the stem to cure. And look at that. That is in there. Use my foot firmly. So this makes a really great, this one's even firmer, support structure. It's basically a rooted stake doesn't get better than that. I highly recommend, if you haven't done this before, to try it. So I've got three there. I could put something in the middle next year and I could use um, some twine to hold it up. So I've got basically support from three sides, plant something in the middle and have a natural support system. It's gonna be great, can't wait. Nothing else is growing in that section, it's empty. So it'll make a perfect 
spot for something interesting. More holes, just repairing. Okay, these are berries. This was sweet potato, so I already talked about that with more rooted sunflower steaks, <laughs> I call them. Um, and this was more, I believe I had potatoes in these beds. This was potatoes, I've already topped it. That was potatoes and that was potatoes and I've already topped them with compost. So they're ready and good to go. I have lavender it's grown from seed. So if you've never, if you thought lavender will not grow from seed, it will. This is from seed last year that I planted and it overwinters because it's a hardy variety. It's like an English Munstead and it smells incredible. Look, it's already establishing itself in this bed and grown from seed. I mean, when you grow from seed, I find the plants are stronger because they're adapting straight for your climate, straight for your garden, the, the conditions within your garden. And uh, I just find they're hardier than if I was to purchase the lavender planted in the garden because whenever I've done that in the past, I found that the lavender would not overwinter. Whereas look at this one, it's done amazingly well. So if you haven't grown lavender from seed, it's possible people. <laughs> That's a mulberry. It had a terrible gypsy moth caterpillar infestation this year. I do need to clean this up. So I'll come here in the winter time, prune out many of these branches. Yeah, this was a mess. And so I think because of the caterpillars, this was just a really bad year for them. All the fruit dropped and it was just this crazy messy plant. So I'm gonna prune this one in the winter time. I'm gonna remove some of those crossing branches and probably film a video when I do it. There's more berries down there. There's a dwarf cherry right here. These are different tay berries, black blackberries and such. This was sweet corn. So as you can see, when growing, when trimming sweet corn, just leave the stems, cut them above the soil line. They're too big, they're too heavily rooted to dig out. I'd end up disturbing all this soil. I'd end up losing a lot of soil. It's dead next year. The side roots will have, the, you know, the aerial, whatever, the side roots of the, the corn plant will have broken down and these things will slide out much easier. Or at that point, I'll just trim them above the soil line and leave them and they'll break down over time. And the final bed is this one. I'm not gonna uncover it right now, but basically in the middle here is radishes. Over here, arugula spinach and down this whole section here is Swiss chard. So this is my little experiment. I'm just gonna leave it as is. I mean, I could plant, cover this with, pl with plastic if I wanted to, but we've had too many nice days. If I was to cover it with plastic, they'd probably die in there. They just rot. So I have this row cover. It's kind of like a fleece. And these vegetables are all very hardy. And what I'll do is I'll leave the arugula, I'll leave that spinach, Swiss chard. I imagine the radishes will just finish because they don't live that long anyway. They do end up expiring after you know they have a, a time span and they become pithy and woody inside but let's see what happens with this arugula uh, spinach and sweet uh, swiss chard let's see if they come back so thanks so much for following everybody that is my last video of the garden for 2020 we're at the end of november christmas is around the corner this is a great time to relax enjoy the holidays with our families uh, go through those seed catalogs that you're probably getting by now and just relax enjoy reflect back on the year plan for next year and just take that break it's it's we're all ready for that break where it's it's due for sure so thanks for watching if you like my video please be sure to click the like button as well please subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified of any upcoming videos i will be filming more in the winter time but more inside and projects that I'm working on, ferments, uh, starting seeds, just different tips. And I hope you can follow along with me. So that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Happy gardening. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.